Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to continue doing our financial model for a renewable energy project. In this short video, we're going to just use the available information that we have already modeled and plug in the cash flows. And whatever needs to be still calculated, we'll do it in the next videos. So stick around and enjoy the learning. Let's going to start by adding the capex in here. I'm just going to reduce the size here. Yeah, that should be okay. And we're going to plug, as I said, only what we have already in place for the cash flow calculations. Okay, so let's going to go and start. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to add the capex, which is something that we did calculate in the past. And that's in here. Then we have the total funding, which we also have done in the past and, in, and is in here. And remember, the total capex should be always equal to the total funding, but it should have different signs because by convention, we define that the capex is an outflow of cash from the project, so it should have negative uh, sign. And the funding is money coming to the project to finance the project, so that should be, have a positive sign. And here we're going to have the uh, we're going to add them together. I'm going to also set this to be, let me see if I have in here. No, I don't. So I'm going to set this to have a top border. I'm going to select all. Sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to select all, Control C, Control Shift right, enter. So that's what we have here. And uh, just let me fix this. Uh, let me just fix this uh, border here, which is not correct. Cool, that's right now. So we have everything in here and should be all right. Uh, we have to add one more thing in here because we also have to add the EBITDA to our calculation, which is not in here. So let's gonna do it right now. I'm gonna add here the EBITDA, EBITDA, right? That should be USD. I'm going to add, and this should be equal to this line in here. Copy and paste everything across, and I think I have to fix this. And yes, there we go. Copy and paste everything across. Okay, so now we have it ready. So we have to finance $30 million, and it's being funded. Then we get a $13.4 million in EBITDA, or cash flows after funding but before tax, right? So that's what we have in here. Next line or next row in our model is the tax paid. We're not going to calculate it now because it requires us to calculate the depreciation only to after calculate the tax paid. So we're going to skip it for now. I'm just going to make it colorful here. I'm going to add some color uh, just to, oops, sorry, let me do it in here. So uh, it's clear that we need to come back here later on, right? So. What we're going to have next then is the cash flow available for that service, which in principle it is all the cash flow we have available before paying the tax. Then we pay the tax and what is left is our cash flow available to serve the debt. That's what it is. And this is a very important metric, particularly for project finance, because banks want to have an idea of the strength of your cash flows so that you can serve the debt. And we're going to see how we can model this later. There is a few ways we can do it. But that's a very important metric so banks can assess how much money they would be willing to lend to the project. So, and here what we're going to do, we're going to do this one here plus the tax paid. And remember, tax paid is an outflow of cash from the project, from the project. So it will have a negative number assigned uh, in front of it because it's going to be a negative number coming out of tax. I'm going to copy and paste this thing here because we have no tax model yet so this number here is going to be equals to the cash flow available uh, before funding let me fix this again uh, let's do it okay cool so here we go uh, we have everything in here so as i said we calculate how much money we can we're going to have to serve with that and that's exactly what we have to add in here now right the next lines are how much interest and principal we're going to pay Again, we're going to model this in the next video, okay? I'm just, I just want to complete, uh, do all we can do with the information already available to us. So I'm going to also mark these two uh, rows here with the orange color so we can come back later. But what we're going to have in here, 
we're going to have that the total is going to be the total that to be served is not this this is not correct it's going to be this the sum of these two in here and let me just do this thing here i'm going to copy and paste formula and i'm going to just add uh top here okay so i also need to format this uh it's going to be a comma zero there we go the dsr we're going to do it later too but it's just a kpi to measure again the strength of your cash flows dsr stands for that service coverage ratio okay and essentially is how much more your cash flow available to serve the debt is compared to the total debt you have to pay okay so essentially we're going to get this row here and divide by this one in here so that's what it is but we're going to discuss it later and the cash flow available to work with service is exactly the total cash flow available for serving the debt plus the debt paid and again i put a plus sign in here because the total debt is going to be a negative number so let me copy and paste this across and i'm going to format the numbers and I'm going to add here this styling here. That's it for today. And in the next video, we're going to see how to model the tax to be paid. See you soon.